Motivation, five tips on how to take on that first fitness challenge. And I promise you that not one tip in this video will mention calories, scales, or joining Weight Watchers. Why should you click on this video about fitness motivation? Well, you already have. So the question is, why should you stick around and listen to this obviously aging, long-haired, bearded bloke who absolutely does not look like someone who knows about fitness? And to be fair, you're right. I don't know a lot about fitness, but what I do know a lot about is motivation. In my past life, my job was literally the business of motivation. Then one day, roughly five years ago now, I decided to take what I'd learned and also what I believed, what I believed worked and focused it all on myself and turned my rapidly declining unhealthy lifestyle around into one completely focused on whatever it is I do now. Roger. And we're getting a picture on the TV. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. I'm going to step off the lamp now. If you want to know what it's really like to walk on the moon, then talk to an Apollo astronaut, not a scientist. The surface is fine and powdery. I can, I can pick it up loosely with my toe. If you want to know how hard it is to scale Everest, then talk to a Sherpa, not a climber. Get From 10 to... We reached the uh, summit and play. Okay? <laughs> My point is, I don't know what it's like to come first in a marathon race, set a new land speed record, or deadlift 300 pounds. But what I do know is what worked for me, and that's all any of us have to draw on, our own personal experiences, the successes, and most importantly, the failures. What doesn't kill us makes us stronger. For me, achieving fitness goals is like one good maths equation. It exists regardless if you understand it or not. It can't be changed because you want it to or, be or because you think you know better. And if you get all the separate parts working together as planned, then you get the result you expect. This video is my attempt at sharing what I did that allowed me to shed nearly 15 stone, 210 pounds or 95 kg in body weight and go from a professional couch potato five years ago to a running god. <laughs> Stupid! This, this isn't a ball. This has got two holes in it and that's about as bouncy as my head. Ready? If you want to know more about how I overcame this level of unhealthy, then I made a video about the value of overcoming a bloody hard challenge. I'll link it in the description. Maybe watch it after you finish this one. Do it. That was me trying. Well, I'm not playing this game. No, no. No, go away. Yay, well done, kitty. What are you laughing for? <laughs> it's the most common question I get asked by people as soon as I show them a before and after photo. How did you do that? And depending on who they are, they assume I did something extreme. They almost seem disappointed when I explain how obviously simple it is. No one wants to make changes. Humans are naturally averse to change, so it's easier not to and then make excuses. If you clicked on this video, then I'll assume you've already processed this and you've decided that you want to make that change. That's the hardest part. You can't solve the equation if you think there isn't a problem that needs solving in the first place. So, tip number five, you have to have a reason. The weight loss, exercise, changes to your routine, the sacrifices, the early morning runs, late night gym trips, the smaller meal portions, less calories, and the overall discomfort are all a means to an end. They're not the reason you're trying to make the changes in the first place. They're the hard work. They're the journey. When you go on holiday, the flight to get there isn't the reason you go on holiday. The sunny beaches, the sangrias are the why. The long flight, the baggage queues, bad in-flight food, screaming babies and no leg room are all a means to an end. Something you grin and bear because you know the payoff when you eventually arrive will be worth the discomfort. Go on, do a handstand. No. Do you want me to do a handstand? All right, let me show you. You ready? Right. If you both do a handstand, you win a prize, okay? Whoever does one.
Nearly. It's exactly the same with fitness and weight loss. You need to visualize your sunny beach. That way, when you need to, you can remind yourself to grin and bear the discomfort. If your reason for getting fit or losing weight is fitness and weight loss, then you will quit during the discomfort phase. It just won't be worth the effort. Too many people fail to do this. They don't actually know why they're doing whatever it is they're doing other than just to lose weight or get fitter. Go for a park run, maybe even a cheeky 10K race for no other reason other than to do something positive. But if you have grander goals than this, then that bug won't catch if the only reason you're out of your comfort zone is to be out of your comfort zone. Think about what your why is. Refine it down to its most basic base level. Don't overcomplicate it and stick to that as your reason. Don't change it. Then the next time you don't want to get up and go out for that run, the next time you want to eat a family sized chocolate bar, the next time you want to stop running and just walk, just think of your reason. Think of your why. And if you've got it right, and it's a big if, then it should incite the right emotional response in your mind to allow you to step it up when you need to the most. And the emphasis is on giving you an emotional response. If the reason is to look like Zac Efron, and I don't know why I chose Zac Efron for this example, then in that moment of discomfort, your reason for being uncomfortable won't give you that boost you need because I promise you now, wanting to look like Zac Efron will not cut the mustard at 3 a.m. in a pitch black field when your head torch is failing and you have 27 blisters. Be trying to torture me. I don't know if you can see, but this is mental. We're at about 92, nine, between 92, 93K. I, I can't put into words how bad I feel. And just the fact that I'm still moving is a miracle. I am broken, broken. This is mental. <sighs> Find a reason that elicits an emotional reaction. Tip number four find at least one supportive person. This one is a hard one and it will 100% depend on your family and friendship circle. If you're blessed enough to have supportive family and friends around you, then this will be a mute point. But for the majority of people watching this, myself included, then almost everyone you know will poo poo your newly found fitness ambitions. You will hear comments such as, you don't wanna run, it will destroy your knees, or gyms are a waste of money and muscles weigh more than fat anyway. You need to have enough self-awareness to know when you hear this, it's just bullshit, so you can ignore it. We've been conditioned from an early age to believe the nonsense we hear from those around us to be the truth. And even though they probably mean well, you have to remember that this advice has bias. They don't want you to change because changing means they also have to adapt to accommodate you and it's easier to just put you off. You're also holding the mirror up at them. No one wants to see someone else take control and make positive change as it reminds them that they should probably be doing the same. It's why Instagram is so popular. You don't need to argue the virtues of fitness with those friends and family that say stuff like this to you. You just need to be aware enough to ignore it politely and don't allow it to derail you. It is annoying and my family still say it to me, even now, except my comments have moved on from why do you want to do that when I weighed 30 stone and my answer was always because I weighed 30 stone, to now, when is all this fitness nonsense gonna end? And my answer is always the same. It'll end when I can't do it anymore. If you think telling my family that I was about to run an ultra marathon was bad enough, you should have heard them when I announced that I was turning teetotal. I'm from a large working class family from London. Drinking was our hobby. And then I thought I was gonna be strung up when I announced I was vegan but these two subjects are possibly ones for another video. I'm not suggesting you make extreme changes with your support network. Just filter out the white noise and don't allow it to stop you or demotivate you. She's <laughs> on your tiptoes. Then you need to find at least one person who does support you. Maybe a close friend or partner. These people are very rare. They may get annoyed when you drag them to a park run or have them stand on a random road passing you water as you run past in your latest marathon attempt, but this person is worth their weight in gold and as much part of your newly found fitness and weight loss success as you are. And whatever else you do, make sure you look after this wonderful person. Shower them in gifts, bribe them and thank them as it will make a huge difference to your success. He's got 800 meters to go, mate. He's got How you feel <laughs> better. <laughs> Felt better. <laughs> <running with> it. <laughs> then after you do see some success, the best part 
is when you see these other family members around you start to believe you. You see them start to copy you. That's when you know what you're doing is right and you are positively influencing through action instead of words. Tip number three, sign up to something now that is so far outside of your comfort zone that it scares you. Find something you can't do. Something that if you attempted it tomorrow, you would fail miserably. A 10K race, a marathon, whatever you want to. Sign up to it today. Give yourself more than enough time to train for it. Print out the confirmation and stick it on your bedroom mirror so you can see it every single day when you wake up and when you go to bed. One of my favorite quotes is from the organizer of the Barclay Marathons. If you haven't heard of the Barclay Marathons, then you should really Google it. It's unbelievably hard. The organizer, Lazarus Lake, said, if you're going to face a real challenge, it has to be a real challenge. You can't accomplish anything without the possibility of failure. The challenge doesn't need to be to climb Mount Everest. It just needs to be your Mount Everest. Enough of a challenge to scare you out of the door and into training day after day after day. That's how real change happens. Don't overcomplicate it. Keep the training simple. Keep the challenge difficult and always keep it on the horizon. Tip number two, use Occam's razor. You now have your reason. You have your close supportive people supporting you and you have your new ridiculous fitness challenge that stretches your comfort zone and causes you anxiety when you think about it. All that's left to do is to keep it simple. Don't overthink it and stick to the plan. I have purchased a new book. This book was recommended to me by Google, so it has to be good. Buy a training plan for whatever challenge you've set yourself up with. I bought myself a decent first marathon training plan when I ran my first marathon in 2021. I'll leave a link to it in the description. If your challenge is to run your first 5K non-stop, then there are loads of great online training plans for this too. The best thing about the saturated world of fitness, you can find pretty much everything and anything you need to take on your first challenge online. Buy it, download it, and then stick to it like glue. And then most importantly, if you fall off the wagon, don't quit. Get back on and don't allow the period from falling off to getting back on last too long. Occam's razor, the simplest option is normally the best one. What you do to make change doesn't need to be complicated. Don't rationalize mistakes, call them out for what they are. Don't beat yourself up if you do make mistakes. Don't think it's gonna be easy. Embrace the discomfort and keep on keeping on. Looking back on the past five years and the fitness and weight loss journey I've been on, my biggest achievement is the process, not the races, runs or events I have a medal for. My biggest achievement has been the not giving up. Tip number one, start a marathon like Eddie Izzard. This tip is probably the most controversial. Not a lot of people know the comedian Eddie Izzard. Fairly recently, he ran 30 marathons in 30 days. He did this at the same time I was training for my first ever marathon. And watching his Twitter feed at the time, he said something that really resonated with me. It is a tough old bloody thing to do. And I'd say to anyone out there who wants to do something, just put a, if it's just a 5K, just put it in the diary and tell all your friends you're gonna do it. And then you kind of feel that you have to do it and then you'll do it. Most people following you on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc., will be your family and friends, friends of friends, neighbors, acquaintances, and work colleagues. And whether you want to admit it or not, these are the people you will not want judging you. Most fitness advice advises against this. Keep it quiet, just focus on you, keep your head down. I'm saying the complete opposite and to announce it to the world, it helps hold you to account as you won't want to admit defeat publicly. Most people quit training for their first marathon before it's even started. It depends on what website you check, but roughly only about 1% of people have ever run a marathon in their lifetime. That's a very, very small portion of the population. However, a lot more people sign up to it with the intention of running one, but quit before even reaching the start line. We all know at least one person who hinted at running a marathon, but then deferred indefinitely. When you remove the genuine injuries from the equation, the rest that quit are simply resilience excuses. And I promise every single excuse is genuine and can't be helped. The will and need to get the job done, the determination to keep training when the training gets hard is part of the process. Giving yourself that extra boost of motivation, knowing that you have committed to it publicly on social media does help. And it made a huge difference to me. To announce to the world, or at least your world, that you 100% intend to run that marathon, half marathon or 10K, will help focus you when the novelty wears off.
So Eddie Izzard said that you should announce your new challenge to the world on social media. I'll go one step further and also add in your fitness ambitions, weight loss target, as well as your future fitness challenge. What's the worst that can happen? These are five things I know helped me. I still do them now, even though the majority of my family and friends just ignore my latest harebrained scheme, which I suppose is progress, at least they're not importing their extensive knowledge of how to run an ultra marathon on me anymore. Good luck in your ambitions. I hope you achieve whatever it is you want to achieve. Don't give up. Exercise in any form is great for your body, but even more beneficial for your mental health. Thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one. Good luck.